everyone. My name is Lady Steele. I'm an attorney Lady Steele on FedLife, and I'm the only open, out, and practicing attorney that specializes in alternative lifestyles in the state of Georgia. As such, I am an attorney licensed to practice in the state of Georgia, and I have to give this disclaimer because of lawyers' ethics. Anything that I say today or to the audience that will be watching us later, none of it is to be misconstrued as legal advice. I'm not here to give legal advice, and what it is we're doing here does not establish an attorney-client relationship. And so if you end up with some sort of case in your jurisdiction, please consult a competent attorney there. If it's not me, then someone else. And by all means, get the help that you need. Uh, I'm a big fan of the National Coalition of Sexual Freedoms Kink Aware of Pro Professionals list. I'm a member, I've been a member of it since the day I became a BART attorney. And so you go to ncsf.org, I believe it is, in order to find that. And what we're here to talk about today is, in general, BDSM and the law. But since I have a whole 18 minutes and I love to talk, <laughs> I'm going to narrow it down to a couple of different stories. Because there has been changes in the political administration as of the last few years, as we all know. But, you know, I have found as an attorney that a vast majority of the politics outside really has little to do with how it affects us because of the cultural climate that is present in America. And that doesn't change no matter who is in the administration or the Supreme Court or in the Congress or the House of Representatives. Uh, for example, I was told to tell a story, and I'm very good at that. So the first story I want to talk to you about is a young man who is currently a client of mine, and he is a teenager, and I'm, I'm keeping the details very, very confidential for obvious reasons. And he had dated this girl a couple of years before. They're both the same age, both teenagers, both very much minors, and she basically wanted to make her boyfriend jealous. And so she came on to my client, and they were all hanging out at the hangout after school. And he did what young people will do at that age. And he decided to kiss her and fondle her above and below the shirt and then inside her vagina with his fingers. And they kissed and there were witnesses that said that they hugged afterwards and all was fine, you know? So, a couple of days later, his dad, uh, his dad, yes, actually gets a phone call from the police. We're investigating your son. For what? Well, they weren't going to tell. So I'm like, okay, well, we're going to contact our attorney. And the second that they contacted the attorney, oh, well, we're not going to talk to you anymore. Typical police tactic, that's nothing new. Well, what was new is that three days later, he was arrested for aggravated sexual battery. And in the state of Georgia, aggravated sexual battery can get you 25 to life. You do not get first offender treatment don't have first offender status and all of the benefits thereof and there's no such thing as early release for that so this person who is very young not even old enough to drive a car yet could end up going to jail for 25 years to life for something that uh, it was very evident to every, everybody around that he didn't do now the crux of that particular issue is consent because there's several different elements to prove the crime but also at the same time, the one that is the, the, the problem to, to solve here is proving that she consented to the sexual contact. Because you see, and this goes back to the culture that I was speaking about, she has a budding Christian music career. She's been on YouTube and all of this. And her mother does not want her to get branded something that would be disfavorable in that culture, in that community. And she's the one that's actually pushing the prosecution. Even the daughter, has said that it was consensual. So it's gonna be an interesting case to see how all that lines up. The takeaway from that is the NCSF lawyers like me and a lot of other lawmakers out there are working on the concept of consent and looking to get it redefined and put into what's called the model penal code. They actually spoke about that here yesterday. And that's the code that lawmakers do have a propensity of looking to in order to model the state's law and it's not, just because it's in the model penal code does not mean it necessarily becomes law in each and every state, because every state is different. And, but they do look to this because they know that a cabal of lawyers, so to speak, gets together and talks about this, and so they trust the opinions of the people who actually put out the model penal code. So the good takeaway from that is, as consent, as we all know in our community, is extraordinarily important, as consent gets better defined in the legal 
world, then it will be easier to help young men like this and young women like this who end up getting in trouble for something that, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that a lot of us did whenever we were that age too. Now, consent can come in many forms. Now, we talk about how consent was on an individual basis here. I have another story, another client of mine, and this one is very particular to my heart. I used to be uh, the co-owner of a adults-only kinky renaissance festival. And my ex-husband and I, we ran it together, and I see someone in the back like, oh yeah, I've heard this already. Or it's something they would be interested in doing, very good. Um, it was great. Um, we had a successful business, a great venue, and uh, all was great. And then, of course, he and I, uh, not of course, but since he is my ex, it did come to, to pass that we did divorce. And in the divorce, he got custody of the business, you know, and that was fine. We, we had a very amicable split. And so he was continuing on the third year, was going to go back to the same venue we had last year to a campground that has served the leather community for years and years. He's owned by leather people. And he put out flyers in a uh, adult toy store that was not even in the city where it was being held, but about an hour north of there. And somehow one of the flyers got out. That's the problem with written media. It got out, got into the hands of the Baptist Association. And the Baptist Association said, oh, this is evil and you're prostituting people because it says, you know, you're going to have debauchery there and you're going to have bestiality there because we, the flyer mentioned pony play and there's going to be trafficking of children because there was Littles activities. Yeah. <laughs> so that <clears throat> was definitely problematic and they raised such a stink that they ended up uh, pressuring the people who owned the campground and shut them down. And there were death threats that has gone to my ex-husband. And the child of, or the stepchild of the owners was being threatened at school. They were threatening to pull the insurance coverage of the land. I mean, this has gone out of control. And my, uh, my ex has sent me, I wanna say about 12, 10 to 12 articles about how, about what happened. None of them have reached out to him. First statement. Now they said they did, but of course they didn't. And even one of them went as far as the UK. So why am I telling you this? His consent to be able to put on his event was taken from him because of the culture of fear, um, the culture of extreme religious zealots. And I am by no means, you know, slamming anybody's religion. I'm a religious person myself. But whenever your religion interferes with our right to be able to do what we want to in our bedrooms, that's whenever you kind of run afoul. And so again, consent was key. It was everywhere on everything that he advertised, and yet his consent was taken away. And the reason why I'm telling you all this is because we have come very far in the leather community, in the BDSM world, in the kink community, especially over the last 20 years. I've been in the community for 20 years, and I have seen the progress that has been made since I came up as a teenager in the 90s. And it's been wonderful. I mean, it, it, I, believe me, I'm so happy with the progress that we have made. However, the problem is, the message that I want to give to you all is be diligent. This is the Leather Leadership Conference. We are here to either learn how to be leaders or how to be better leaders and take away from this, the witch hunt is still going on. And you need to keep on speed dial a lawyer's name. If it's not me, someone else, go to the Kinkaware Professionals list on NCSF, absolutely, because there are wonderful people there. Keep the NCSF on speed dial. Guess what I learned this weekend? I always learn something whenever I come to LLC. I absolutely love it. I learned that they, the uh, National Coalition of Sexual Freedom has a uh, response line that you can call when things happen to this client and my both of the clients, both the child and my ex in regards to getting shut out of his venue. And you can call them and they will help you deal with the press, put out positive, uh, kink positive statements. If you're being harassed, get you in contact with a lawyer to get uh, protective orders in place, to criminally prosecute, to help all of these things occur. I had no idea. And I have been affiliated with them for seven, eight years now. but. There are resources out there to help you as leaders, as community leaders, munch leaders, event coordinators. Uh, even if you're just having play parties you know, in private because you're in a much, much smaller venue and you want to keep things private, there are resources out there to help you. There are people out there that will help you. Turn around and look at everybody in this room. 
every single person in here is willing to help you. I promise you. You may not know them, but we're all in the same boat together. And I promise you this also. Again, I have lived long enough to see the progress that has been made in our community. And I have fought the good fight myself. You know, I've helped people getting uh, to get their children back or at least not have them taken away because they were exposed as kinky. And talk to each other, network, get to know one another because silence kills our community. It absolutely does. Fear kills our community. Don't let those forces out there that tell us that we're doing something wrong. I mean, you all, I cannot tell you the names that my ex has been called by these people. He has the screenshots. The mentality is out there to take us down, but we don't have to stand for that. You know, I was bullied whenever I was in school. I know a lot of people in this community have always been alt of some sort in one form or another. We're adults now, we don't have to put up with that anymore because there's people like me, there's people like the NCSF, the people at LLC. I mean, I know for a fact, Master Ben, who is the, the chairperson of LLC, if you were to reach out to him and say, you know, oh my gosh, this has happened, I just happened to be at LLC, who can help? If he can't help, he'll find somebody who will. I can guarantee you that. Um, we have a couple of board members and board support staff in here right now. I'm board support staff for LLC. And I promise you, you reach out to us, we will do our best to help you. And so, how are we doing on time? I would absolutely love questions from anybody. Really? Yes, I know. I am. I could, I'm so glad you can edit this because I'm not sure this is going to go in there. So. <laughs> um, questions from the audience. Is there anything that is on your mind as community leaders that you would like to ask a lawyer about? Now, again, keep in mind, I'm only licensed in Georgia, so otherwise the information is from a highly educated layperson. Yes, sir, in the back. Are there any states that are better or worse as far as, I guess, uh, attitude towards consent? In case the microphone didn't pick that up, the gentleman in the back asked, are there any states that are better or worse in regards to consent? Let me... This is supposed to be positive and uplifting. I'm so scary, I'm the lawyer. I'm the one that's going, oh, you know, evil is out there. Okay, here's the deal. In a nutshell, this is the class that I usually give. Everything we do is illegal. Everything we do, bondage. In the state of Georgia, if you restrict anybody's movement for any period of time, you don't even have to transport them anywhere for it to be kidnapping. Discipline, you know, the, the mind dominion over another person, that gets into kidnapping of, of another sort or false arrest. Sadism, masochism, of course, taking the beating is not necessarily illegal, but giving it certainly is. That's assault, that's battery. Everything that we do is illegal. That is why it's so important with what the NCSF and other people are doing to get consent to count. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to make everything legal that we do, but it will go a long way. So the reason why I say this to answer your question is there have been different cases that have come through the courts from surprising areas. It's been some privacy cases in Georgia where people have said what goes on in their bedroom is their business. That, that spoke to the fact that what they were doing was consensual. Uh, there's a case up in New York where this man and woman had a back and forth online relationship talking about all the things they were going to do. He was going to beat her and she was going to like it and she did and you know, the stuff that all of us in here have done. And uh, it, she, he ended up getting prosecuted and convicted of, I believe it was rape or sexual assault. I, believe it, I know it sounds like the same, but it depends on the state. This is in New York, I'm not sure what they call it. But on appeal, they were able to produce all of these messages and the appellate court said, yeah, no, this, they, they, this is what they were doing. This is not, this dude didn't do this to her without her consent and he was kicked out. So New York, you wouldn't be so surprised by that because you think, you know, a little more liberal up there. Although that's not necessarily so. Uh, there was a lot of really positive case law that comes from the more conservative states. Well, why is that? Because a lot of conservative people want you, or respect privacy, and they want you to stay out of their lives, you know, get the government out of my house and out of my bedroom, you know, that sort of mentality. So it's very difficult to speak to that. It, you know, I'm gonna give you the lawyer's answer that everybody hates, it depends. It just depends on where you are, it depends on your legislature. And that's why I tell people all the time if they, you know, wanna get truly involved, the easiest way that you can make a difference is to become a lawyer. <laughs> Not necessarily the easiest path, but we change laws every single day, every time we go into court. Now, don't wanna do that? Be a lobbyist, get involved. 
go and talk to the people who make the laws, contact lobbyist groups like the National Coalition of Sexual Freedom. I know I keep harping on them, but they're great. And talk to them about how it is that you can get involved. Because even if you're just an envelope stuffer, delivering stuff to the, the post office or updating a website or something, then you're making a difference. Even the smallest drop in the bucket really does matter. And I cannot tell people that enough. And not to mention, there's something about service, there's something about volunteerism, it doesn't matter what side of the slash you're on. Giving back to a community that has given us so much, it makes such a difference in how it is that you feel about yourself and about your community. And that makes the networking and the contacts that you need in order to combat the people that come. So unfortunately, I can't really say, you know what, you should move to Delaware. I, I can't do that. Because it really just depends on what the states, uh, like with the model penal code that's coming, hopefully, or through the American Law Institute, the ALI, Hopefully, the states will adopt that. There are some states that take their criminal law directly from the NPC. There's other ones that just take it as like an advisory opinion, and then they make their own. So keep an eye out. You know, this is the sort of thing that, um, you know, will become significant really soon, as soon as they get this to get through. I have a little bit of time left for a short question. Can you make a short question? If not, I can keep talking. I guess I'll keep talking and then. Yes, sure it'll be, but in the case of the Renaissance Festival that was being harassed by the Baptist, um, what kind of actions are out there to take when that happens to to stop that from happening? When so an ounce of prevention versus a pound of cure. Yeah, like if you contact your legal advice, what, are, what exactly are they going to do? The question was, in the case of the Renaissance Festival, what could have been done to help prevent this? <clears throat> While I do not like hiding with what it is we do, the written word that was put out probably, probably was not the best idea. And I'll tell you why. One of the arguments that the Baptist Association had was this flyer could have gotten in the hands of children. They're kind of right. That's the problem with putting it in writing. But if you have a website that has a disclaimer whenever you go up, go to it, it says, I am over the age of 18, 21, whatever age, and if I enter this website, I agree, I am this age, and you click, I agree, you know, we've all done that, then that is a great legal way to protect yourself. Because then you can go to these people and say, only adults are allowed to see this. So as far as the rest of it, you know, go fly a kite. You know, we're just doing something on private property that is membership only, private club, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I'm pretty sure my time is up at this point. So thank you very much for coming, especially so early in the morning. I appreciate you all being here. And um, thank you for watching out there in the, in the world of the internet. So thank you.